Ahead, we're going to be chatting uh, a little bit um, about uh, the debate last night, obviously, and also we'll talk to CNN's Candy Crowley because now her role in the debate is what's coming under fire uh, from Republicans. Let's begin with um, who won. Would you say it was a definitive victory for, for Mitt Romney? Because I've heard now a number of Republicans say it was definitive. It doesn't match what the polls are saying. I, I think we take both debates in total. To me, the, the, the one salient fact is that in order to pass any of these proposals, you know, for, forget all the details, you're going to have to get them through Congress. And what Mitt Romney has demonstrated and shown the American people that he is a man that actually has been able to work with the other side. You know, in Massachusetts, he had a legislator that was 87% Democrat. And he's actually taken three, $3 billion deficit and turned that into $2 billion rainy day fund. So he's actually able to work the other side, whereas this president, his record is that he's not been able to do that. When he had his, the first two years, when he had total control, he didn't pass immigration reform. Uh, he jammed through on a very partisan basis the stimulus, the health care law, Dodd-Frank. Then when he's faced the divided government, he's been AWOL. He simply has not been able to work with anybody in Congress, Republican or Democrat. He really does not have working relationships with anybody. And evidence of the fact is his last two budgets have been voted on three times now in Congress. Final vote tally, 0 to 610. That is a stunning repudiation of his leadership. So that makes you an excellent Romney campaign mm. surrogate. However, the question was right. who won. And when well, I, again, I guess so, I'm, again, I'm clearly... so, so, so again, I, I, think, I think Governor Romney won because he, continu he, no. he continued that momentum. No, I, I would say when you take a look at your CNN poll and said that Romney bested Obama 58 to 40 on the economy, that is the issue of the day. I mean, I think that's pretty clear. I mean, in that same poll, though, they said that who would better handle the middle class? President Obama beats Mitt Romney, and both of them focus on the middle class that entire debate, and so that's also what the exact same poll says. But, but we, we also need to understand that when you grow the economy, and if you're, you're the one that's evaluated that you're better at growing the economy, that's what's going to actually help the middle but class. The middle class goes beyond just the economy, it also goes to the health care, education, other issues as well. So I'm simply stating exactly what the poll said. The poll was very clear, the president beats Romney on helping the middle class. Senator, uh, what were the most important ways, if any, you thought this debate reframed the argument between the two of them and set up the final three weeks of the campaign? Well, again, it's, it's just so incredibly important that, because trust me, Jason and I hear this all the time, you guys have got to get together, you've got to work together. And that is what Mitt Romney has demonstrated, plus he actually has a plan. I, mean, I, I talked about, yeah, President Obama has a plan, it's those two budgets. Zero to 610. I mean, we are facing the most predictable financial crisis in our, in our history, and the President of the United States is spending millions of dollars, thousands of man hours producing these budgets that not a member of his own party are willing to give it a vote. And, that, and when you're looking forward, you know, let's face it, President Obama won on a slogan, hope and change. His new slogan is forward. He's got nothing to, to, to offer in terms of forward where Mitt Romney does because Mitt Romney understands how to grow the private sector. But, but, but and that's, that's like, incredibly last, important. Here's but, the deal. Last night Mitt Romney said at one of the tail end, government cannot produce jobs. So how can a person stand there and say, I'm going to create 12 million jobs, but then say government because, can't create jobs? Because in, 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 a normal, in a normal recovery, you would be creating 250,000 jobs a month, which translates to 12 million jobs. The reason we're not creating those jobs is because of the choices, the policies that President Obama took. You know, so took, Ken because, Rudolph you know, here, here, here's the fact. I'll, I'll, he, he, didn't, he did not come into office with the economy in your free fall. We were losing jobs. But the fact is, within two months, we entered the second quarter. We only lost 0.7% GDP. No, 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 the, 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 the economy had bottomed out, and then we started recovering the we third lost quarter. We four seven million jobs in the last six months of 2008, and we kept losing jobs in the first three months the, of 2009. The, 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 That's not true. The, 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 no, the economy began to recover in the third quarter. It basically flattened out by the second quarter, the, and, and it actually grew close to 4% the next three quarters, but then President but, Obama's policies took effect but, and they started but, scaring consumers right, and business owners and as a result the economy totally stalled. Senator, why, where is the evidence if you look at the the entire decade uh, of, of, of you know this since since 2000 that tax cuts are going to do any better when President Bush left 10 years to the day after President Bush passed his tax cuts there were fewer people working than on the day they were passed. Something that was true only during the depression what is the evidence in hey, that let, experience let, that would let, say let, this would let, do better? Let, let me give it to you. The Bush tax cuts, when they were enacted, revenue into the federal government was a little under $1.8 trillion. Before the housing bubble burst, which, by the way, was caused by Democratic policies, revenue was $2.5 trillion. No, listen, listen, listen to the numbers. $1.8 to $2.5 trillion. That's a 42% increase. The same thing happened under Ronald Reagan when he cut taxes. Revenue grew by 67%. 
Tax but cuts work, Bush increasing term, taxes more. Bush term, the median income was lower when he took office. The number of people in poverty was higher, and there were basically fewer uh, one million more people working than on the day he took office. And, fewer ten and, years and, to the day after the taxes. So why, when you look at that? Why can you uh, say with great optimism that the results would be better than we've seen either in the Bush years or under the Obama years? Perhaps we're dealing with structural problems that are larger than, than the, the issue of what the tax rates are. You, you mentioned, I think, the metric that is most uh, you know, troubling to President Obama's tenure is median household income, which has declined $4,500, which is 8.1%, double what has happened in the past under recessions. That has occurred during Obama's recovery. But it also, I mean, it I mean that, that, is, that, is incre that, is, that is an incredible it also, metric It also failure. declined during President Bush's not, recovery. Not, not to this extent. But it did decline. Did it uh, not decline under President not, Bush? Not, not, yes, but so not to this extent. So is perhaps a structural problem that is larger than any one president? Sir, I gotta ask but, but, but again, it's, hey, it's the policies. Yeah. 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 I've got to ask you, you talk about tax cuts. The Congressional Budget Office has been very clear. The Bush tax cuts contributes to the deficit. And so please explain... $600 billion during this administration. No, not during this administration. Okay. But, but again, though, the President Bush had a surplus with left office with a significant deficit. I'm simply asking, how can you make the argument, let's cut the deficit, but keep going with the tax cuts when it's not going to... The C, again, I, CBO is real clear. It, it, it increased the deficit. But it's, the, the deficit's always blamed on the Bush tax cuts. The fact is... Well, during, actually, no, during, during, of it. A small portion of it, six hundred billion dollars out of five thousand three hundred billion dollars worth of deficit Actually, in this administration. Five trillion, uh, no, 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 no. Let's 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 talk about just this administration. Five point three trillion dollars worth of deficit. Six hundred billion dollars is the total tax cuts. And again, here's the problem: President Obama's solution, the Buffett rule, would raise five billion dollars, eleven hours worth of spending, or even the full blown tax the rich would raise sixty seven billion dollars a year to to try and. Solve a one thousand one hundred billion dollar deficit? No, I, I'm, I'm answering two questions. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You get like four questions. I get at least <laughs> one here. The, the senator is absolutely right. I thought one of the best, most eloquent answers that, that Governor Romney gave was, "What is the difference between him and President Bush?" I thought that was a legitimate question asked sincerely, and I thought Governor Romney hit that out of the park. The second part, the second part though, was the other gentleman who stood up and said. What have you actually done for me? And look at the price of gasoline. And Mitt Romney, I think, eloquently went through the list and said, with all due respect, Mr. President, and these are my words, not Governor Romney's words, candidate Obama promised root beer in every drinking fountain and did not deliver on those and, campaign and, and, and promises. And I'm going to stop you here because we're out of time. And as, for some reason, you and I could sit down and do 25 yeah. minutes on this debate. And we're gonna, we, 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 we are going do that. to do yeah, that absolutely. one of these days. Uh, but we have to stop it. But as you know, we had Ken Rogoff on earlier mm. talking about gas prices. And he was like, it is completely specious to try to tack gas prices to an individual president. Precisely. He has said that. But we have to take a break.